I'm Dwight Kilgore. I'm the manager of the Wildlife Habitat Area. This area was started in 1985, which is on Fish and Game property. Originally, it was an alfalfa field, and I planned out most everything that's out here with the trails, the types of vegetation, the location of vegetation. I give tours out here uh, for kids that want to learn about wildlife, whether it's trees or animals. We put as much out here as possible to attract everything from insects to birds. Uh, we have different types of wildlife out here, but it is not a park. We just consider it a habitat area. In other words, we don't allow the kids to play out. We don't allow people to bring dogs. It's just a quiet walking place, but it does attract a lot of wildlife and is very beneficial to the wildlife. Okay, I think my favorite area is probably the observation shelter behind me here. And the reason I say that is, one thing is it's away from the road enough to not have a lot of noise, but they're one-way windows and you can see out, but you can't see in. And so we've actually had deer walk right underneath the window and eat some grain and nibble on the tree while we were standing inside. And we get the birds to come down on the ground and right on the feeders that we have hanging in the windows, right within inches of you. Uh, we sit in there in a chair, but almost every morning, just watching the birds as they first come in to feed right after daylight. In the winter time, I've counted as many as 63 doves at one time on the ground around the building here. And right now you're getting a lot of the breeding activity and the dominance activity. We have a red-winged blackbird that every morning comes and flies next to the window, hangs on the netting, and looks at himself in the window. He thinks it's another blackbird. So you're looking at that bird within inches. And it is really a, a neat, quiet place to sit and watch wildlife. We have nest boxes, which the little wrens and chickadees, some of the sparrow hawks, starlings, English sparrows, things like that, all use the nest boxes and they use every box we put out. So that's a good thing to do for birds. Birds, we've listed 110 species so far, which is really quite a bit. And the only reason we can do that many is because we're out here so long, we see them, watch them, and when one passes through and lands, a lot of times we'll be able to see it and record it. It may not stay here. And they stay, a lot of them stay for the winter, don't go south because we're in lower elevation and we have a lot of thermal cover and food. So it makes it really nice for people to come out and watch the birds. Yeah, I had another older fellow maintain the area and we come out almost every day, but I do my exercise after we work. And a lot of the work is taking up volunteer plants that not only start as seeds, but will uh, come up from roots from other trees. And the trees now are getting to the point where they're beginning to produce seeds and cones, as is the brush. And so it's really producing a lot of cover, a lot of food. Okay, this bush behind me is a Nanking cherry, and purposely tried to get different species to bloom at different times of the year to attract uh, the earliest pollinators clear down to the fall aster in September, which uh, has the last of the honeybees and wasps on it. The Nanking cherry then in turn will have small cherries. Okay, this is the access to the stream window, which you can look out into the stream through a little plastic window and see the small fish there. This is handicap accessible with the concrete bottom and the railing. And then when you get in the window, you can look at the native fish in there and uh, watch them do their thing for a while. Okay, we can just, doors unlock, so you can go in any time. And then when you get in, you can stand here and look at the fish inside. We have a, a little bench for the little short people that can get a little higher up in the window and see what's going on. Right now we can see probably, I would say a hundred or so small fish, red side shiners and dace. And they're a native fish to the area. And uh, there's different age groups here. And the larger ones you see in there are big as they get, about three inches long. But, uh, pretty soon they'll be spawning. And then later, late fall, or rather late summer, you'll be seeing the little tiny thread sized uh, minnows that have hatched. And so you'll see all age groups here at one time when you're looking in the window. It's a very small pond, of course, and it's only three foot deep, but there's a pump in it. pumps water across 
the ground here over to the fountain and then in turn runs down the stream back into the pond again, goes round and round. Uh, there's no way we could have water, that much water running continually, but to have that circle effect and the pump makes the stream available for all kinds of different wildlife. Then we can have turtles in the pond. Every morning the ducks come in here and land and kind of nibble around. Of course we throw a little bit of corn, that helps a little bit. There's toads that come in here pretty quick to spawn and then we'll have a lot of little tadpoles in here. And of course then you have the insect life in the pond and in the stream which is beneficial to the things in the stream as well as the wildlife that feeds on them. So really valuable to have this pond. The cattails behind me provide cover for the red-winged blackbird, which we can hear him sing in there. And uh, so they have two or three nests in there every summer. And then pretty quick the pond lilies will be up, which makes it a real visual uh, scene thing for a person that comes out. And a lot of people come out and take pictures sitting on the dock and, and uh, take pictures with the pond lilies out there because they really are a, a beautiful lily when they finally get up. As far as somebody maintaining the area after this fellow and I cannot do it, I don't know because it's going to take somebody that knows what to do with the plants. Uh, they have to know when and where to do that trimming and cutting and removing. They have to have the opportunity, in other words, the time to do it and the physical ability to do it. And uh, that all weighs in. We get paid a little bit, but uh, certainly not for all of our time. Most of it's volunteer. So uh, just being able to volunteer is a good thing also. But to watch the place grow and be able to come out here and, and uh, see what is done and let the people enjoy it, we get constant notes and calls about people enjoying themselves after being out here saying there's no place like it they've ever been. So it's really neat to come and visit if you get a chance.